It just makes me smile when I think of Ray Charles. And just that voice and that piano playing, it's one of the greatest, greatest voices of all time. I know that everybody loves Ray Charles, but I always think nobody could possibly love true Ray Charles as much as I do. I can't even believe I got to sing with Ray Charles. Oh, oh you'll never, ever know. <laughs> Because Ray had had such far-reaching influence on vocalists and in so many different genres that he was a natural focus of a duets project. So we looked at all the various genres that we might explore and then we thought, okay, well, who are some of the artists that can fit into these various categories that could really work well with Ray? We wanted to put the artists in a room together and really have them collaborate. Two great artists working together in true synergy creates a magic that you can't get any other way. When I got the call, uh, I was ecstatic, first of all. I mean, the tunes were perfect. Very good year, Over the Rainbow, Hey Girl, they were all great songs. The ideas for songs came from a variety of sources. Uh, one of the ways we selected songs was, for example, in the case of Nora Jones and uh, Diana Krall, younger artists who were influenced by Ray, we'd ask them to choose some of their favorite Ray Charles songs. I just love everything about Ray Charles. I mean, you could sing any song, and it just sounds like Ray Charles, and it sounds amazing. And it's, I mean, I, I can't even talk about him. He's so amazing. There's really nothing I can say. I mean, in reality, I don't really want to sing with someone like Ray Charles. I just want to listen to him sing. I don't want to ruin it with me. You know, but I had to do it because it was, it was the kind of opportunity that I would, you know, never forgive myself if I didn't. And it was so weird. He sounded so good and, and he was very nice and we did it all live. And Billy Preston was playing organ and it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Watching Ray collaborate with the artist was really an amazing process. One of his many gifts was finding a way to uh, work with artists to bring out the best in them. And he directed traffic. When, when you're in the room with Ray, there was no doubt it was Ray's record. He would ask the singers to do a lot of different things. He did the same thing with Diana Krall. He did the same thing with Elton John. Um, he had thoughts about how he wanted to hear them sing, and he would uh, he'd throw it out there. And uh, it worked. It really worked. Oh, have mercy. And the session with B.B. King was the first session that we did. That was in the spirit of how we wanted to approach the whole record, where we put everybody together in a room and said, you know, let's just play. Here you have two of the greatest innovators in, in blues and soul music, and perhaps the creators. And we had them just get together and do what they do and feed off of each other and interact. And as B.B. put it, let's just go head to head like we used to do in the old days. No one can do that better than those guys. I used to have plenty of money, yeah. Oh, yeah. Buy the clothes in town. Mm -hmm. Bad luck and trouble overtook me. Yeah. I'm bound to go down now. All right. Lord, have mercy, please. Oh, How good? Please have mercy on me. How good? What have I got to do to make you love me? What do I do when lightning strikes me? One of the most terrifying things ever happened to me in my career was that I first, when I first came to America, um, I did a, a TV show and I did um, a duet with Ray Charles. That kind of person, you sit opposite them, uh, you, you sing well, I think, spontaneously. Uh, it's like playing a really good tennis player. You seem to play better 
because you raise your game. And I had to raise my game because I was sitting across from Ray Charles and I could not believe it. I'll sing the first verse, you sing the second. I'll sing the, the bridge of what you call that. We did one of my songs, Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest Words, which, which, he, which he'd sung at a concert in Anaheim last year. Um, and that blew me away that Ray Charles was on stage singing one of my songs. But we did this duet, but it was just incredible to sort of sit there and, uh, and sing with him. Sad, so sad, it's a sad, sad situation. And he's singing, it's sad, it's sad, it's a sad, sad situation. I've got a lump in my throat. They, people in the in this control booth are, are crying. This is the, one of the great, all-time great, and he's still sitting in his love of music. He's sitting there. Um, he walked in with a cane, he sat on the chair, he did like two or three takes, but he was meticulous about his own performance. That was incredibly impressive to be with someone who has, has music has been his whole life. I mean, since he was a child. I think the performance has all the sadness of what that song is about. Elton was so moved when he left. He still talks about it. He talks about it on stage. Oh, Thank you so much, Thank son. You. Right. You that you're going back. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. Come, Neil. Beautiful. Ray used to always say country music and uh, the blues ain't just cousins, they're blood brothers. Do I ever cross your mind? Darling, do you ever see... Bonnie was at the top of our list of artists that we thought would really work well with Ray. And um, when I brought it up to Ray, he was so familiar with her and uh, so in favor of it, enthusiastic about it, that I thought they knew each other.